don't really know what the vibe of today's look is because like from the makeup to the earrings to the shirt even to the hair it's like kind of giving that 70s aesthetic but then we turn our attention towards my water bottle so maybe grown-up strawberry shortcake hi hello good afternoon i don't know why i am just very much into the sewing projects right now i'm having a lot of fun with them so today i'm going to be doing a sewing project that i've been wanting to do for a while i've been very curious of how it's going to turn out i've had the supplies for a while too but it's a little bit of a daunting project that i've been putting off Today I am going to be attempting to not only sheer fab sure fabric, sheer fabric. Today I'm gonna to be attempting to sure fabric. And not only that, but I'm also going to attempt to make a top out of that fabric. I absolutely love a certain style of top that is shirred fabric on the bodice, and then like slightly puffy sleeves, right? I have a couple shirts like that, like the one I'm wearing right now. And so I figure why not try my hand at it, try and make my own. I've done a fair amount of research on how to do this and a channel that's been very helpful if you want to go check them out is a channel called Annika Victoria and I will link them down in the description. They helped me so much learning how to do this. But today I am going to be using this really cute and really fun like purple, black and white celestial fabric. It's a woven fabric and has no stretch to it. But it's also very light and flowy, so I really, really like it. I've been wanting to use some of this fabric for a while. I have so much extra from a previous project. So I'm excited to use some of it to make this top. The other supplies I'm going to need are thread that matches the fabric. Again, I already had this. And just, can we appreciate this color match real quick? Perfect. And then I'm also going to need some elastic thread. I got this off Amazon but you can get it at any fabric store. This is also gonna be interesting because I've never made a shirt from scratch before, especially something with sort of puffed sleeves, but it seems simple enough. It seems like the shirring is gonna take the longest, but it seems like what I need to do is get a strip of fabric about not quite twice the length that I need it to go around the body, but about 1.5 times the length because Sharing the fabric is going to make it shrink and bunch up. So I'm going to have to measure out how wide I want the body piece to be and how long. I'm probably going to measure out something longer than it needs to be because that way, if there's too much fabric, I can just cut off the excess and sew everything together. But if there's not enough, that's a little more difficult to deal with. What's going to be very interesting is making the sleeves for this shirt. I have never done something like this. I've never made sleeves or something. I also don't have a pattern. I'm going to be basically eyeballing it from stuff that I see online and the basic shape that I need to do. I will be going into that section blind, so hopefully this works out okay. Alright, so I have drawn out the bodice of what is going to be the shirt. And this piece is going to be 13 inches by 68 inches, which is a lot of fabric to sure. Or should I say it's a lot of fabric for sure. But I am going to cut out this piece and then using the extra fabric, I am going to draft a pattern for the sleeves. I'm probably just going to look online the basic shape that I'm going to need. I'm not really sure how to measure it, so <laughs> I think... I'm probably just gonna have to wing it. Again, I'll probably err on the side of making the measurements a little bit bigger because they are going to be puffed sleeves in the end, which as Anne Shirley Cuthbert would tell you, uh, life is not worth living without puffed sleeves. And finally, these are the pieces that I cut for the puff sleeves for the shirt. I have no idea if this shape is going to work out or not, but I cut two of them, cutting each on the fold of the fabric. I will also be using some elastic that I have on hand to make the sleeves puffy and also to cinch the bottom of the sleeve. And when I'm done, I'm just going to have to sew along here. But first, I have some hemming to do on the sleeves and on the main shirt piece. Alright, so I am going to have two cameras going. One is my phone camera and the other is my webcam camera. This is, I am experimenting with camera angles right now so that you can better see what I'm sewing. But first things first, I am just going to 
simply hem the edges of the main shirt piece. I need to do this before I start shearing the fabric because once I do, it's going to be all bunched up and it's going to be really, really difficult to hem. So I'm going to hem the top and bottom piece. This is just going to be a straight stitch. go. Now I have to take the elastic thread and I need to hand wind it onto a bobbin. I can't use the machine to wind this thread onto the bobbin because then it's going to stretch this elastic thread as it does so. So I need to take a few minutes, do it myself, and then put it into the machine as you would any regular threaded bobbin. And we are going to see how this shearing goes. There we go. This is actually, so far it's going easier than I thought it would. I think this thread is also a lot thinner than I thought it would be. It's quite stretchy, so I'm excited to see how this goes. Sorry, webcam footage. So I'm gonna have the right side of the fabric facing up so that the purple thread is what's going to be visible from the outside of the garment and the elastic thread is going to be on the inside. I need to do a straight stitch for this, keeping the fabric pulled tight and flat while I'm shearing it. And I'm going to be doing sort of a, a, a rounded zigzag pattern up and down the fabric lengthwise. It's all going to be one connected stitch so long as I don't run out of bobbin thread. Not stopping to start a new line but just connecting them all. stopping about an inch from the raw edge of one end. The needle is in the fabric, so I'm going to lift the presser foot, just pivot the fabric 90 degrees, and bring it down like that, hand turning the crank on the side of my machine about two rotations. One, two, I'm gonna do three or four. Four. There we go. Needle is back in the fabric so I can turn it again towards me. Bring the presser foot back down. So now this is where it's going to get interesting. I'm going to have to keep the fabric stretched flat as I go. It's going to get more difficult as I shear more of the fabric. But so far I am loving the effect. I'm so excited to see how this goes. So I watch a lot of videos on sharing fabric just to familiarize myself with the technique and all those videos said that ultimately the technique is quite easy. And I do admit at first the, the technique is daunting but it is easy, I can confirm. What very few videos <laughs> failed to mention was just how long sharing takes and how much it takes from you. I probably spent an hour and a half sharing fabric 
and I'm not even halfway through the full panel. I'm maybe a third of the way through by sharing for an hour and a half. And now I have to take a break because <laughs> what a lot of those videos also failed to mention was just how painful it can be for your wrists. Um, there's an ice pack under this tea towel because I now have to go ice my wrist for an hour. And for context, I went through four years of university, computer programming, designing video games, animating, drawing, graphic design, and never from any of that did has my wrist hurt more than it hurts now. But an hour and a half of shearing fabric has broken me. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm gonna let the ice pack do its magic. Uh, do be warned if you try to do a, a shearing fabric project, be careful. It takes a lot of time. So, I finally finished the shearing of the fabric. Uh, I need to do some cleaning up, like just getting rid of these extra threads and whatnot. I'm also gonna have to trim this excess off the bottom. I'm gonna have to end up uh, re-hemming the bottom here. I have to chop off some of this excess fabric, just because the frill looks nice just as is, but when I tried it on, uh, it's very, very frilly. Now you might be wondering, why don't I just do a few more rows of shearing and just finish off the whole thing? Well, reason number one is that the measurement here is actually pretty uneven all the way along, so it wouldn't really work. And reason number two, I don't want to. My arms have never been so sore. This entire thing took me five hours, and that five hours is taking into account slip-ups where the thread tangled and also needing to refill the bobbin with elastic thread because obviously that bobbin is not going to stay full for as long as when you have regular thread. The elastic thread's a bit thicker. This is what it's looking like. I have some unevenness up here but when I tried it on that didn't seem to be an issue so that's good. So I'm gonna do some cleaning up on this for the rest of the evening and then tomorrow I am going to get the sleeves done. All right day two of this project and I cleaned up the top a little bit last night, getting rid of the extra threads and chopping off the excess fabric at the top. I'm actually going to flip it over how it originally was yesterday so that this sort of gathered piece at the bottom is more at the waistline rather than right at the top. So I think the fit is going to be a little bit more natural by the end. I also have all of the sleeve pieces planned out along with their elastics. I was considering doing some slight shirring to the sleeves, but honestly, uh, my wrists still hurt a tiny bit, so I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to use these elastics. I've already measured to how long I want them. So I'm gonna get to the sleeves in a minute. But first, I am going to attempt to hem this edge up here. It's gonna be difficult because it's very frilly from the shearing, but I'm gonna try my best because I don't want that to fray. Now that I have the bodice.
otherwise of the shirt all fixed up and ready to go, I'm going to move on to the sleeves. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to close up the side hem of the sleeve so that it's just one sort of tube shape. Then afterwards, I am going to hem the top and bottom of the sleeves by making sort of a casing that I can afterwards put the elastic into. So I'm going to make sure that there's some room on either side of the hem so that the elastic can easily fit in. Again, I've never really made sleeves for a shirt before, so I'm really just winging this, so we are gonna see how this goes. And with the sleeves all sewn together and finished, I've pinned them in place to the bodice of the top, keeping these frills on the inside of the sleeve so that they don't poke out. Now, I've never attached sleeves to a top before, let alone one like this, but already I'm really liking how this fabric has turned out for this shirt. So this is how I've pinned it just in place. I'm gonna do some stitches across here to secure the sleeves in. And that should be the last step for this. As you can see today, I am keeping up with the grown-up strawberry shortcake vibe. I'm actually so happy with how this project turned out. I did have to do a little bit of adjustments to how the sleeves fit onto the bodice of the top, but I decided to style the final top with a corduroy black A-line skirt that I have, a layered choker and amethyst necklace combination, just so that I can match the amethyst to the color of the shirt. And then I also finished it off with my platform Mary Jane's. But overall, here is the final top, just as is. The sleeves definitely turned out puffier than I was imagining they would, but I'm kind of here for the drama. It definitely took a little bit of extra tweaking. I had to bring these sleeves in a tiny bit, just so that the sleeves actually fit on my shoulders. But overall, despite uh, the pain and the trials and tribulations of this project, I'm actually very happy with how this top turned out, but I am happy with how it turned out and the shearing also I think looks really good and I'm glad I went with turning it upside down so that this sort of cinched part sits at the waist instead of up at the top. I think that just works a lot better for the shape, but overall I am happy with the result. It can even be worn as an off the shoulder to get some real puffy sleeves, but that would definitely require a more dramatic skirt moment than just the corduroy A-line that I had. Either way, thank you for keeping me company on this journey. It truly broke me. If you're thinking of trying something similar, I highly recommend take breaks, go slowly, take care of your wrists, and expect it to be a full day. It's it definitely took much longer than I thought it was going to. But then at the end, you have a pretty cool project to show off. I'm proud of myself for getting the shirring done. And I'm proud of how it turned out. It's not the most even shirring, I'm sure. But overall, I am very happy with how this project turned out. So with all that out of the way, I am going to go rest my wrists a little bit more because they're still... I won't lie, they're still a little sore, and I hope you all have lovely days. Bye!